for this to work around. So the, the first two things that um, we need to have everyone set up to, to do this workshop is to have a, a directory open on your computer, a folder where you want to do the workshop <clears throat> material in. So I just made a folder called Bergen Our Ladies, and I'll be working out of that. And um, uh, our studio. So I presume that everyone's comfortable with our studio, given this is an our workshop uh, for uh, our ladies. But in case you are not using our studio, make sure to download it. Um, can, can someone let me know if they do not have it? So we can wait, but otherwise, give me a thumbs up if everyone has our studio and a directory to work in. So I don't want to I don't want to leave anyone behind, especially if I can't see faces. Okay, so it's looking good. And then waiting for Heather. Unless I missed Heather's thumbs up. Okay, perfect. Okay. And the next thing I will be doing is now sharing my screen. So Hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, I will be showing you the slides from here. If you want to follow along, if you can open the slides in your own browser, web browser, if you want. It's uh, my GitHub, which is github.com slash popups slash our package slides. Um, and if you want to, I'll be showing the slides on your screen, but if you want to go back and check on your own or look at my presenter notes, you can just open this, this uh, repo and everything will be there from this presentation. So you can click here, see the slides in your browser and uh, all the slides from this presentation will be there. Uh, yes, I can paste the URL in the chat. There you go. Okay. So without further ado, um, here's a, a short workshop on how to build your first R package. So um, it will be hopefully uh, hopefully easy, but I mean, as with, as with sharing things live on a computer, the computer often has a mind of its own somehow. Um, but hopefully you learned some techniques here on how to use something called the use this package, which standardizes uh, ways of putting together all your R functions into an R package. So we've all used R packages before, um, you know, you, library parentheses and then the package you want. So for example, some tidyverse. Um, and this is just a, a workflow for how to, how to package your own functions quickly and simply with the use this package. Um, I won't go into any of these tutorials, but there are many tutorials online. So I, I won't even pretend to say that I came up with all of this. Uh, a lot of this is from these resources, which are in the slides. Um, so that's where, uh, that's where a lot of this material will be if you want to go in depth and a bit further. Um, so first, uh, I want to say we're in, I'm in Norway. I was invited over. So we're going to be working with a Norwegian topic along with, a, I'm coming from British Columbia visiting Norway. So we're going to work with some fjords um, and that will be our, our programmatic muse of the evening. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to build a fjord package. And I just realized I spelled fjords wrong. So please forgive the error. Um, I think, this is uh, digital. Could oh, you, excuse me. Could we see, uh, Birgit, are you having a problem with some of the links? Uh, no, it was just that uh, the uh, to the post from uh, Emil on his website, it doesn't work. I think his website is okay. taken down, but. Okay. And, um, okay, Sarah, go ahead. Thanks. Okay, so everything is good? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is digital and I know sometimes it can be awkward if uh, over a digital meeting, it's easier to sometimes sit quietly. So if you want to do that, by all means do that. Um, but I guess for those of you in the room, who has used R, presumably everyone. And for those in Zoom, feel free to unmute, your, unmute yourself if you want to talk and ask questions. And uh, the follow-up questions are who has written a function and who has written a package? Functions, functions yes. Functions, yeah. Thank you. And, and for those in the chat, if anyone wants to chime in. 
for who who's and you can also feel free to type into the chat if you wish. There are a lot of functions yet type is not. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I could have done a Zoom poll if I knew how to use Zoom. <laughs> that would have been good. Next time. Okay. So um, basically, uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, is let's talk quickly about functions. So what what is a function? Uh, if anyone wants to chime in, this is. I, I want, basically I want to make sure we're who's, we're all on the same same level to to make sure I mention stuff if people are newer to our functions versus more comfortable with our functions. So if uh, anyone has would like to suggest what what is your idea on what a function is? A, a, short, a shortcut way to implement some procedure that you may do yeah. more than one time. Yeah, this is pretty much a perfect. Uh, Dylan is in the room and he says a shortcut procedure for something that you may wish to do more than one time. Uh, which is a very, very good summary. Essentially, it's a it's a command in one line that just does a thing. And typically, the one thing that makes a function different from a line of code that you would execute is you can provide an, a, an argument. And that helps change the behavior from you want it to spit out option A versus option B. Um, so that's essentially what is a function, why make one? You make one if you want to automate stuff that's otherwise kind of tedious to do. On the other hand, what is a package? A collection of functions. Yeah, uh, just says a collection of functions, which is literally yes, that's all a package is. And if you're if you're new to making a package, it can sound intimidating. You know, you see you see someone has a whole website devoted to making a package when really it is just a group of functions. Uh, on a very simple level, it's a folder on your computer that contains code. And then you push this folder onto the web and other people can then download this folder and use the same code. Um, you can write your own packages from scratch um, or you can, you can do uh, procedures that are automated with, um, with a standardized R workflow. So here's just some example, R packages, you know, read R, dplyr, uh, ggplot to plot data. We're not going to do anything nearly as complicated as ggplot. In fact, we're going to do a pointless, uh, almost pointless package, but it's very simple to hopefully give, give an idea of what you actually need to do. Um, and it'll even have some documentation and, um, and a, a, a website to go with it. So we're all going to be short, short, in a very short time, we're going to be web developers as well. <laughs> So the first thing, now we get to the interactive point and I'm going to be showing you slides, but if it's not too difficult, I will also try and show you how to do this stuff interactively. Um, so if everyone can install these two packages, that's the main two packages that we need. And then uh, let me know in the chat when you, you have finished installing these packages on your computer. Um, I, I suppose also if you uh, open the slides on your own computer, this URL, you, you can copy and paste a lot of this code if you're feeling lazy about typing, which is totally acceptable. So if, if you're really ready, Dylan, as well. Yep, I'll get now. Okay. I think there's how many of us are there? Heather's Hi. ready, Brigitte. Okay. It's the, the fine balance between giving people time and not dragging it out longer than it needs to be. <laughs> I know we all sit on Zoom quite quite a lot these days. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Um, and if anyone wants me to slow down, just give a shout and I will make sure uh, to give time for people to catch up. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do is run this line in your console. Make sure you're in the directory you want to be. So I'm just working straight out of documents. Um, and 
uh, that's that's essentially where this folder will be created. And a lot of this code should pop up. Let's see. Going to. I'm going to switch to sharing my whole screen rather than just the slides so you can see everything I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to work out of a slightly different directory because I made the R Um, and basically like magic, it shows you everything has been, uh, whoops, my screen is just given up. Uh, it runs this code and it opens something called an R project file for you. And what this means is essentially, I'm sure you've all run into the issue of you're sharing code with someone and it doesn't work because you need to make sure you're in the correct directory for the folder to work. So then you do the whole CD to the directory you want, or you know you, you set your working directory. In the case of an R proj file, which has now been created, if we go to our uh, if we go to our R Bergen Bergen R ladies folder, it's made a fjords folder with an R proj file in there. Everything, every piece of code that I execute in this R proj file will know that it's going to be in this directory is where this code is going to be executed. And that's fundamentally how a package works is it needs to know where this code is living and, and the relationship of the code location to all the input parameters you're providing. So that's why an R proj file is really helpful. And in, if you look in the um, RStudio um, window, it's at the top right corner. It, you can see that we've got the Fjords file, Fjords project, apologize. Fjords project within the Bergen R Ladies folder is open. And you can see I've got a few other projects that I worked on recently, and that's what it, what's, what's there. Okay, question in the chat. Uh, sorry, where's the chat? Um, you do not need to load these packages as far as I understand, um, since I, I did not load these packages when running this line. Are you having trouble? Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so now we don't need that. So now the rest of the code that we're going to execute will be in this, uh... oops, sorry. The rest of the code that we're executing will be in this Fjords package, or sorry, Fjords, um, Fjords project. As you can see in the top right, it's Fjords. So make sure you're using this rproj file. Question. Yes. Um, what's your question? Is it in the chat? Yes. Team. Yes, yes, this is going to be an R package. Um, but uh, when you run that line of code, the use this, sorry, one sec, the use this, um, one moment, do you see my, you see my screen? Okay, when you run this line of code, the use this create package, it will create this project file for you. And the rest of what we're doing will be out of this project file. Yes. So if um, hopefully on everyone else's uh, machines, it's done this, it's created this, these files for you. So uh, Fjords folder with an R folder and these two files, description and namespace. So everything else that we're doing will be out of this file. So open this up in our studio and every, all the code we're going to be um, working with will be in this project within this R project uh, uh, file. Okay. So going on. So now we've got all these new files that were created for us with the use this package. And this is basically the very basic standardized uh, folder and file setup for creating a package. The R folder is where our function scripts will go. Uh, the description file is where information about the package goes. So things like the author, email address, contact, so on and so forth. 
man and um, man and namespace do not touch those. Those are automatically generated. Um, thank you for bringing that. Uh, yes, the argument inside is the name of the package. Yes. Along with uh, if you want the package to be stored in a certain folder, then you provide the file path. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so now we're going to create our first script. So all of this, uh, all of the functions that we um, want in our package, as we said, a, a package is a collect collection of functions. They all live inside the R folder. And you can manually create these, but it's much easier to simply do, use this, use R, and then we're going to call this finder. If the name isn't super important. It's more for your own personal, um, helps, helps organize. Um, I like to group my functions together in a script that's just a file name that just sort of gives a thematic idea of what they do. Um, but the name of the the name of the file is not really important. Okay, so from there, I should have created the finder.r um, file for you. So if you look to if we look to our file structure on the right and click R, and a new uh, script has appeared on your machine. Now we're going to do a very simple, simple function. I, again, I apologize if I, I was hoping to be able to easily do a uh, typing on the screen and a presentation at the same time. It's just a bit difficult uh, with one screen. So we're going to do a very simple function right here, um, which if you can copy and paste, or I can copy and paste it into the chat as well, or you can type it out. So in the chat, we've got the code for our very first function. And the function we're going to call is fjord finder. And we're going to provide the names of some fjords and it will tell us if it's a nice Norwegian fjord or uh, let you know that you're in Canada. And if you provide a third, a different kind of fjord that it doesn't recognize, it will say it's never heard of it. So. We put this code inside this R file, save it, and document it. And this is the number one important function to making your own R package is the dev tools document function. This helps update your package and create all the necessary files and descriptors for your computer or R studio to recognize that it's a function that you want to use later. So we're going to do this, uh, execute this function in the console. So DevTools document. And you can see it's said that it's updated our documentation and loading this new function or uh, this new package shorts. So I'm gonna quickly check my notes, make sure I'm not forgetting anything for everyone else to see. And again, if you wanna read these notes, they're also on GitHub. Um, for this presentation. So the what makes a function useful is also not only what the function does, but it helps to know, uh, to help document what this function does. Because half the times you write something and then three months later you go back and you're wondering, oh my God, what did I do? How do I even use this? So that's what documenting this function, uh, documenting this function helps. And we will be adding more information every time we document it. But first let's make sure the function actually works. So let's try running a few, uh, a few lines of code. First, Fjord Finder Sonja Fjord. It's a nice, uh, nice Norwegian Fjord. Um, if we were to run this before, before trying DevTools document, it would fail because you need to run the document function in order to save the, the function to your computer and then, and then make sure that it actually is uh, executable function, basically. And um, let's try another. And here, I'll, I'll paste these in the chat. Hopefully that's helpful for everyone. So we try running Fjord Finder Sonja Fjord. Next line of code, Seychelles Inlet. 
the next line of code would be Galu the set. So if we try Seychelles, it says, I see you're in Canada, eh? And if we try this Greenland, Ford from, uh, uh, Ford from Greenland says, never heard of it. And that's just because we put these, it's a very simple function. Um, we've provided these few fjord names and it checks to see where they are. So um, are there any questions at this point? Um, it is not in the global environment, but it is, I, I'm not the best person to answer this because I, a lot of these, a lot of the functions are sort of hidden under the hood of our studio. So when you, when you load a package, for example, you load tidy R or dplyr, all those functions aren't in your global environment. Um, but your, your, your R session, you can still access those functions. So they're not in the global environment for two reasons. One, because if you load a package and then every single function shows up in the global environment, that's overwhelming. You're gonna have so much stuff in that list. But then two, the reason why it's not in the global environment is so that you don't accidentally edit it and overwrite it. So that's why it's not in the global environment, but because you've loaded the package, it's still usable. Yeah, exactly. Function in a package is different from a local function. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. So from there, uh, if I mentioned earlier, uh, is you oftentimes want to document your functions. So in this case, we want to add internal documentation. Um, how you do this, you have to use something called R Oxygen 2. R Oxygen 2 is just a format for supplying metadata. Um, so, for example, the title of the function, a description of the function, a description of the function arguments. So, you write out this, all this metadata, then you run DevTools document, the number one most important function for making your own package. It will generate a file. And at that point, you can use the question mark to query what uh, to query help on your own function. So with that knowledge, let's add documentation to our own package. So we're going to document two things. We're going to document the entire uh, package as a whole. And we're also going to uh, document each function by editing the individual .r files. So the first thing that we want to do is edit or add a description for the entire package. And that's really simple. We open up the description file that was created earlier. So that you can just open up in RStudio and just quickly add a title. So this package finds fjords and helps people learn R. Uh, you can put in your your author, as an author, you can put in your first and last name. What this package does, a uh, short description, description here. So this helps you, uh, helps anyone who's downloads your package in the future to see, oh, okay, like this is what the package is called and what it does. And who, who do I contact and how do I email them if I want help? So for now, you don't have to you don't have to update this on your end, but that's just how you do it if you're publishing your own package eventually down the line. And as usual, you have to run DevTools document. You can also um, run use this use package doc, which again I will put in the chat, which will help create further documentation for you. It just automatically creates this R file that uh, helps helps um helps people learn or helps people access the help file even more quickly so now that i've i've run this use this use package doc i can then type devtools document to make sure you update your changes and now if i run question mark fjords a little help file pops up and if you remember I wrote short description here, use my name, the title of the package. 
So, you know, like if you're using a, if you're using another R package and sometimes you're like, oh, you know, it says use the question mark and, and the package name, that's, that's how people create these uh, documentation files is, is with this method. Okay, next. And we can see all these files were automatically generated for us. Again, the RD file, the .r file. So we don't have to do all of this stuff manually. If we look at the RD file, which stands for R documentation, you'll see that this file is read only. And remember I mentioned R oxygen two, that's the, that's, this is R oxygen two. It's the format that this metadata is stored in and it's all done automatically by R. So you don't have to do this by hand. And in fact, it's strongly discouraged that you do this by hand because that helps keep things standardized across the R universe. But this is just a peek of what it looks like inside. And this is how this file generates this documentation here. Okay. So, and as I said earlier, we can use question mark fjords to get some information about our package. Um, and now we should do this for this function. In fact, you should do this for every function. If you're planning on ever publishing an R package, you should do this for all of your functions. In this case, it's slightly different. You need to go back to your function itself and add a hash sign pound sign with a single apostrophe. And then there's certain tags such as author and R will, R will automatically pre-fill these. So title, if you don't want to remember all of this, there's also a handy shortcut. And that's in R studio only. You go to the code dropdown and you go to insert our oxygen skeleton and your, your cursor needs to be inside the lines of code to make sure that it knows which function you want to document. Insert our oxygen skeleton and it puts that all in for you. So you don't have to remember, you don't have to go back to the slideshow and say, oh, I don't remember, is it at sign? What, what is it? And so let's quickly fill that in. So find a fjord. I just want to make sure I'm doing what matches the uh, presentation. So find a fjord is the title of this uh, package. Um, we can add a description. Check whether a fjord is in Norway or Canada. Oops, sorry. I don't know how to scroll back. There we go. <laughs> um, Param, this is an important tag. So at param is, stands for parameter. So if I highlight the word name, you can see it highlights name inside the function. And what this, this is a super important uh, line of your R oxygen skeleton because it tells other users what, what name actually is. So in this case, it's a string that we supply to our function of a fjord name. So, let's say you're, you're doing any other function and let's say you're doing a function like a mathematical function and you want a number supplied. So you'd have, you, you would specify what type, you know, that you want, that you want the user to supply, not a string rather, but a, a number, something like that. Um, finally, you have to uh, return, return is what value it returns. So this also returns a string it returns a sentence, basically. Um, and finally, you want to have the export tag. This one's really important. What you're doing is you're exporting the, the function so that when the user starts typing, you know how stuff will get autofilled. So you'll say, use this. And it provides all, there's all these autofill options. If we do that right now for fjords, nothing comes up. And that's because we haven't exported this function. So that's what export does. If you want to have a function inside your package that's a sort of a hidden internal function as a helper that no one else should be able to access, you don't have to add the export line. 
And finally, there's just an example, which is just example code so that someone else who's new to your code can, can uh, know how it works. Just, just an example. So again, we then do DevTools document. And it has updated a few of our files for us. We've got a new short finder RD file, which means that if we go question mark short finder, a help file pops up for us containing all of the information that we just filled out. Okay. And also, if we go to our files, you can see it says writing namespace. We open up our namespace file. Uh, again, this is an R Oxygen 2 file read only, but it's added this export line for us. Uh, are there any questions at this point? Um, hopefully, everyone has been able to follow along. Yeah. Um, and if I'm going too fast or too slow, just say. Okay. So uh, this is just rehashing what I just discussed. You can add in these uh, this shortcut with the code insert our oxygen uh, option. Document it as we just did. Created these files, which we just looked at. And this documentation, which we just looked at. Longer form documentation that we want to add. So. Many times you open up GitHub for someone's package and you see a giant website um, where you know it says in great detail how to use this package. So that's uh, creating a README file. So we can do use this, use README. Um, I'll paste in the chat again. And it creates a README, README uh, document for us. Uh, if you look on GitHub, uh, for example, this is just a, a different GitHub page. We've got the README here. And basically, you can think of the README file as your, your front page, your website page on GitHub. This is what people are going to see when they go to your package on GitHub and want to read about it and learn what it is before they download it. Um, in this case, uh, as the R package suggests, uh, an important thing that to have on your README is to include installation instructions. So uh, in this case, I want to make sure that what I have matches what is online. So I don't remember exactly what the installation instructions are, I'm sorry. Let's see. Sorry for, for the chaotic scrolling. <laughs> okay, I don't think I, I put it in the presentation, but I think I think originally I decided I didn't want to waste too much time updating this README file. But in any case, it says very clearly here how to do it. And typically, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's something like remotes install GitHub, something like that. I I believe. So that's what you would, I, I don't take my word for it. This might not be the exact line of code, but this is where you would put that information, um, which we can look at in the, in the future after the end of this workshop if, if people have questions. Okay. So uh, another big thing is a vignette. I'm sure all of you have used a vignette before. If there's a new, new function or new package that you wanna try out, a vignette is basically a, a walkthrough an example. So let's make a vignette so that someone who is going through this Fjords package can look at a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually do it. Again, in the console, just write, use this, use vignette, find Fjords, and it generates all of this stuff for us. So again, you don't need to remember how to do all of this YAML and, and, and code, for example. So this vignette sets up most of the beginning for us. And in, if for those of you who are familiar with R Markdown, this is an R Markdown document. You've got your, your text. You can just type it out in the actual body of the file. And then any code that you want to highlight, you just put inside these R chunks. So 
In this case, let's just show a simple example. And that's, this will generate a, um, an R Markdown website in the future. Uh, once we document it, that will show a quick example with some text and an example. Um, if the package is not yet on GitHub, how do we get it there? That will be coming up in the future. <laughs> that will be uh, in about 10 minutes or so. Once we finish building this package, uh, uh, yeah, we, we will then push to Git, which I suspect might be the part that will be most troublesome as we walk through this earlier with a few other people because there's a lot of security features with Git, but we'll deal with that uh, in the future. Okay, so we've got our vignette. And you guessed it, we have to document it. So everything that you do, DevTools document. So we've made our readme file. We've made our vignette file. Now let's document them. Now again, documenting it will update the namespace, create any files as necessary. So let's check our namespace. Looks like it didn't update too much, anything actually. But I believe it may have made a vignettes folder for us, which you can see here. Okay, so, um, and it also updated the readme package or readme file. Okay, we're going on. Sorry, one sec, we've got people heading out. Okay. So now that we've um, documented our package, we can take a step further and use other packages in your code. So when you're developing stuff, the, there's very little chance that you're just developing all your own code from scratch without using any other packages ever at all. So if you notice here, that's actually kind of what we're doing. We've got just very simple base R code, but let's say you want to use dplyr or you want to use um, ggplot, something like that. Uh, at the moment, there's no way to do that. Because when you're building your own package, what you never, ever, ever want to do is this library ggplot2 and then my function and, and call ggplot2 within your library. You never want to do that. Instead, what's best practice is this. You want to do ggplot2 um, and whatever plotting function. You always want to use the double colons. And that's just to make sure so there's no, no, no doubt whatsoever from the computer's point of view where that function is coming from and whether it's something that you defined yourself or whether it's something that you have to pull in from a separate package. So, and there's a number of reasons for that, but um, we won't go into those right now. And instead, we're going to figure out how to actually add another uh, function or another package to your code. So just to make this thing needlessly complicated, but still illustrate the example, we're going to use the glue package instead of just regular old paste. So the first thing that I suppose you want to do if you haven't is probably to install the glue package. So install packages, glue. Um, I'm not going to restall. I'm not going to actually do anything right now because things are going too well. So if I'm worried if I re restart R, it might break for this presentation. So, but for those of you who are following along, make sure you install the glue package. And we're going to update our little Fjord function using glue instead of paste. And those are the, the yellow lines that I updated. And so I'll just paste that for you guys there. And please let me know when you have done that. Um, give me a thumbs up or say in the chat once everyone has installed Glue and updated their code. And so we'll just replace that old Fjord Finder function with this new one. Yes, or you can just replace those, those two lines. Um, might be easier just copy and paste over the whole function. Hmm. Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up, so it looks like Everyone's good. And this is a stupid question. You, you, you're not running the code in each of these compartments. So when you use the document function, it's just, it's recognizing changes you make each of these compartments. Yes, so yes. You don't actually have to come in. Um, so uh, Dylan's asking, um, so you're, 
How do I? So you were asking. Like when you make a change in one of these compartments, you don't have to. You don't have to run it like you would a conventional R, R script. Okay. So Dylan's saying, basically, he's asking about um, if you're updating one file versus another. You don't have to tell DevTools which files you're updating. It just recognizes within the within the project that you're working on, which was which was updated. Um, oh, sorry, Martine. If it's helpful, I can just say it with the presentation instead of live coding. That might be easier. So I'll do that. And if there's any if there's any um, anything that you want to see live, I'll just do that then. But otherwise, I did my best to make sure the 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 slides look exactly like what will show up in your code. So I'll do that. Uh, let's see. Okay, can you see the, the slides? Yeah. Okay. So you've updated um, package. So the, you've updated your function so that it very complicatedly uses glue instead of paste. And again, as I mentioned, you always make sure you use the package colon colon function convention. We did not do this. We did not do library glue and then just call the glue function. Okay, that's probably that's probably a, after DevTools document. That's probably the golden rule number two is in good good practices for package development is to always package function notation. So we next have to tell our function that we're using the glue package. The reason for doing this is that if someone downloads your package, and I'm sure you've all run into this, where you download a package and then you get a little message in your console and it says, this package depends on other stuff. You need to download this other stuff first before you can use my package. And this is what this is, what this is doing. This is why you have to use this, uh, this practice and, and, and why you have to uh, use the package name function notation instead of library package is we're going to do use this, use package glue. I will paste that if for those who need it. Oh, sorry, Martine, I just saw your message. Okay. Um, I, so I, I suppose, I suppose, should we do a vote on live coding or not? Yeah. Um, Cause I, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse people, but if, if the live coding is helpful as well, I will gladly do that. I also don't know if there's any screen delay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Um, okay. Do you still see my screen? Uh, sorry, Xil, can you say where where is where to add? Oh, you add this. You do this in the console. So I will show you. Oh, oh God, sorry. This is what this is the slide we left off on. I think. Okay, so you do this in the console at the bottom. Use this. Use package glue. And now we go to the description file. If you remember the very beginning, back when we first started this journey and there were only three files in our folder, one of them was the description file. Fjords, the title of the package. But if we scroll down suddenly, it's much more interesting. It now added the imports glue uh, section to this file for us. And Basically what happens when a package is loaded in R is it checks this description file. It says if there's anything in imports that you don't have downloaded on your computer, then R will print out the message for you saying you need to download dependencies. Question, mm -hmm. uh, pardon my pun. Uh, can you glue the glue, glue package to a specific uh, generation? Of that yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, it's asking uh, if, uh, if, if you can, let's say you want a specific version of this package, you absolutely can do that. So instead of use this, use package glue, min version. Say we want min version 0.1.0. I'm not sure what versions of glue there are, but 
as you can see, now yeah. description's been updated. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And as we just went over, it's added the package name to imports in the description for us. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are ecologists, but in ecology, you frequently use lots of data sets and packages. I'm not sure in other fields, I'm sure it's similar. Things like standardized, standardized data sets that are, are frequently used in a, a certain analysis stream. So in this case, we might want to add our own data. Um, so uh, let's add a whole list of Norwegian fjords to make our package a bit better. So I basically just went to Wikipedia and the article list of Norwegian fjords and I downloaded it. Um, and I will share you the link in, in the chat where you can get this. Um, if people want to follow along right now. So the first thing we need to do is get this CSV file. So I will show that to everyone in a second. Um, so the CSV file is at this URL. And I, I meant to email this out to everyone. I completely forgot, so I'm very sorry about that. But if everyone can download this CSV file at the URL that I've just sent in the chat, uh, I believe. I think GitHub makes it easy to do that. Let's see, I think you just need to download it from raw. Yeah, from here. So yeah, okay. And I think you can do file save as CSV. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I. I I, I don't want to slow things too much down, but I can also try and if people are having trouble downloading the CSV file uh, via GitHub, uh, I can also email out the actual CSV file um, after we're all done. But for now, I'm just going to illustrate the example so that hopefully, uh, even if you're unable to follow along on your, your end of things, that hopefully it's clear enough that you'll be able to do this. So um, use this has a certain way of, of using data. And the first thing is called uh, the use data raw function. See here. So we run in our console, use this, use data raw. And as you can see, it created the data raw folder for us. So I will show you um, let's see, define the CSV file. Let's see. I don't remember where this CSV file is. Um, maybe it's in my download somewhere. Okay, sorry, I, this is a part of the presentation that I completely forgot about actually finding this CSV. See if my computer can just find it. Uh, you know, what? I I I'm just going to use. Okay, here it is. This is when I made the package earlier. So I've got this Norwegian fjord CSV. Does anyone know? Can I send a CSV through Zoom chat? Can I just I send? Let's try. Let's see. I'll try it. Maybe I can share it with you guys. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. I'm so glad that worked. <laughs> so there you go. Everyone can download that file. And let me know when you've downloaded it. So what we'll do after that is you paste it into this data raw folder. So that might take everyone a minute or two. So I'm going to wait till everyone has, has wrapped up that and given me a thumbs up when they're ready to go. Let's see, one thumbs up, two, three. Yeah, cool. Okay. 
Okay. I think everyone else is. Are you good, Dylan? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we've created this data raw folder and we've pasted Norwegian fjords.csv into the data raw folder. Next, we have to edit dataset.r. So if you noticed the folder that you pasted Norwegian fjords into, there's a pre made file called dataset.r. And what this file is, or what this uh, .r folder, or sorry, script, this is where you do the very simple act of reading in your CSV, changing the column names, and then you tell, so you make whatever modifications you want to your raw data, and then you tell uh, your package to, to use that data in the package. So I will paste this for you in the chat. So you don't have to type that all out. So I'm just gonna do that. So basically we've, we would read this um, data in. You don't have to execute this code, but um, in, I don't, I, I'm lying. You do have to execute this code. Sorry, I said that incorrectly. So we have to read in that, that uh, Fjords file. So now we can see it in our environment. We can open it, we can look at it, and we see the column names are really ugly. So I'm just gonna rename the column names manually just to clean up those names a bit. So now our column names are, are cleaned up. This is now, I want the package to use this data as our default data. So that's when I run use this, use data, Fjords. This is the name of the data object, which I probably should have named something else. It's a bit confusing when everything is Fjords all the way down. But this is the uh, oh, sound. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, could go with sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Or Wikipedia, even something. But the, 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 um, the R object that you've created is what this parameter is inside the use data function. Overwrite equals true is default um, because you don't want to have multiple versions of some data floating around in your package. Typically you want to overwrite your old data, make sure your package is using the most up-to-date data. And again, as has been the theme is we can see the console has told us that it has created a new folder. Now we've got the data folder. We've got fjords.rda. .rda is an R data object. Um, and you can load it if, uh, if you want to check it out. It should look exactly the same. And in fact, it is. It just overwrites this previous one. OK, so we've run this code, created the data and the fjords R data object. So now. Um, we have a list of Norwegian fjords bundled into our package. So if you want to bundle in any data into your package, that's the step-by-step -step process on how to do it. So we can try running data. Actually, first, I'm gonna remove the old fjords object just to make sure it's not in there. You can see my environment is empty. data.fjords, and that's, you know, when you've got packages that have example data sets, this is how these packages bundle in example data sets into their package. So if you want to have an example data set in there, that's something you can do. Okay. Um, before we move on, since we just wrapped up that section, is, are there any questions? Do you still need to keep the raw data around, or can you go ahead and um, so it's asking if you, Stein, Stein, sorry, Stein, Stein, Stein. <laughs> sorry, um, is asking uh, if we need to keep the raw data. Uh, you do not, no. Uh, I think it's best practice to keep it just so that if someone can see how you derived this examples data set, but it's my understanding the way that it is, is you don't. Um, yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen, I, I've definitely seen packages that don't have the data raw folder. So yeah. are there any other questions at this point? No? Okay, so next step. 
So um, we can improve our fjord finder function a little bit because now we have a whole list of a whole list of fjords to choose from instead of just the two that were originally in there. So I will paste the updated function. We want to change that line. So I'm just gonna update it on screen. So originally we had if name in this list, see Sonyford, Hardangerford, Dangerford? Hardangerford, Fjord. Danger Fjord. Yeah. <laughs> so now we can just use, so you can see it recognizes uh, that that's, this is a, a object in your package that exists. So we want to see if the name of the fjord is in the name column of our data set uh, to use that whole list of Norwegian fjords instead of simply the two that we manually provided earlier. And if you remember, we need to run DevTools document. Well, as always, if you're ever updating your function, the first thing that you want to do if you're bug checking your code and you're thinking, why isn't it running? Try running DevTools document. Maybe you just forgot to document it. So now we've documented our changes. Uh, the uh, R knows that we've updated this package. And uh, I can try a different fjord that wasn't in the list originally. You, you all can try it too. So. Adam Jordan is a nice Norwegian fjord. Um, did that work for everyone? For those of you who are live coding along. So cool. That's exciting. It's always exciting when it works <laughs> without too many issues. Okay. Are you both good? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is not something I have too much personal experience with, but my understanding is it's best practice. So I also should be doing this is have test files for your functions. Um, and that's something called uh, with the test that uh, function. So we do use this, use test that. Basically what this does is creates a little testing environment for your uh, package in the tests folder. And you can provide a few tests. So if you wrote a function and you know that it's going to fail in a certain way, uh, you can use your test that file to make sure your function behaves appropriately, basically. Um, in this case, let's create a test file for the finder, um, finder packages. So I just pasted that into the chat. And it creates a, a little testing script for you. Would all these steps be the same if I wanted to transform a Shiny app into a package? Um, assuming your Shiny app has functions neatly within a, a, a file, um, a separate file, and you're, you can use these functions uh, you can use these functions without issue, then yeah, you should be able to just paste those functions into, yeah, into an R file and just go run through this all step by step. The thing that you'll have to remember to do is the, in, is this R oxygen skeleton for all of your functions that you already have. Um, you'll just have to remember to add this skeleton to all of your functions, but yeah, then, then it should be step by step, very similar to this. Okay. So we've made a little test file, of course. Made a little test file. And, and Priyanka, if you have problems, you can always email me while you're working on it if you wanna make a package of your own stuff. And I, I can help you bug fix as, to the best of my ability. If you, if you want um, in the future, just send me an email, no problem. Okay, so here's a little test that we're going to put into our little test file. That was testfinder.com. Basically, we're telling it to expect an error if someone puts a number in here. Um, and we run our test. Um, again, this is not something I have experience, too much experience with. 
I typically just assume my functions are great and will never have errors for anyone else. So, so I have not had to test files. But um, in this case, uh, what this illustrates is that if we've got known errors, where, where we know something will cause an error, we can run this test function to make sure that the errors run as expected. And in this case, uh, turns out everything works as expected. Okay, um, let me check my presenter notes real quick. No notes, <laughs> cool. All right, so after all of this, um, here's what the description file looks like. Again, every time we run DevTools document, it updates this description file for us. And you can see uh, we have some testing that was added along with uh, the test that function or test that package. So all of the functionality for those of you who go on and, and want to learn more about testing and such, it's, it's been updated within the description file. Okay, now um, one of you asked a while back, I can't remember who, I apologize, uh, about sharing this package to GitHub. So we're now at this stage. So when you're sharing your package, it's just generally good practice to have a usage license. So things like Creative Commons, MIT license, you know, basically giving other people permission to, or, or lack thereof, to modify, update, fork, distribute your package. Um, in our description file, it conveniently gives us a few handy functions to add a license file. Gives a few suggestions for different licenses to add. So in this case, just for the sake of this example, uh, use this, use MIT license. We're going to add an MIT uh, usage license to our package. There are websites online that, uh, there's a really nice website that I can share at some point. I just need to dig it up. That gives a cute little overview of, uh, uh, not cute, a handy, handy little overview of the differences between each one. Um, and I will, I will try and dig that up after this presentation. So, but for this example, we're just gonna use the MIT license. And as usual with lots of other stuff, it's added files for us. It's added a license file and a license markdown file. Okay. Um, which you can see, oh, sorry. Which you can see is added to our, our file tree. Um, you can add a default code of conduct for interacting with your package. Um, which I, I um, will show you, there's a little trick to that as well. Use this, use your code of conduct. Um, and what it does, you can see at the bottom, it says copied to clipboard. It created a little sentence for us to add to our readme file. So I open up my readme file and I can paste a little code of conduct that was automatically created for us. Save that. Now the big part is getting everything to Git. So we have use this, use Git. Um, you're gonna get a slightly different, uh, every time you use this, it gives you a slightly random uh, one, two, three options. And I think that's just to make sure that you're not asleep at the wheel and actually truly agreeing to share your files. So it will look slightly different to you uh, on your end. Um, just uh, so for my, in my case, it said one and three, but it might be slightly different numbers for you. Okay, so let's now try and get this onto Git. Do I want to commit my files? Definitely. Or am I sure that I want to, and I want to make the first commit message initial commit? Yes. In my case, this might fail because I already have a, a project on, on Git. Okay. So now we can try to push to GitHub. 
Uh, I actually won't push to GitHub because I, I don't want to overwrite my previous. I already have it on GitHub with a different uh, when I was testing this presentation. So I don't want to overwrite all of that because that's sort of the best version that's online. But uh, I want uh, for those of you who want to try this, you have to run the use this use GitHub. Use GitHub um, function. And in this case, which I suspect will happen to everyone, um, you will probably get bad credentials as an error. It probably will not work actually. And the reason that it won't work is that you need to create a personal access token so that your so that GitHub, the server, has and your machine have permission to interact with each other. Um, so thankfully, the use this package has a handy uh, function called create GitHub token so that you can, it helps you go through this on your own. And again, you write that in your console, enter that into your console, create GitHub token, which I will share with everyone. Excuse me. And what it will do is we'll, we'll open GitHub in the background for us. So you need to log on to GitHub this is where you have your personal access token. I'm going to, in this case, you can, you can name this token Fjords Workshop, just so you know. I, I, I'm not an expert on Git access tokens and Git security. So I don't, wanna, I don't want to speak too much to, as to what is actually going on behind the hood. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just go with all the default options here. Um, I'm sure for those of you who go on to do more package development and that sort of thing, um, perhaps this will be more important, but I just, for my purposes, just when I'm making a little package for my own usage, I, I've found that the defaults are all totally acceptable. So um, basically set, you create that little token. Um, oh, I thought I had a screenshot. Now I've deleted that page. On the next page, you will, you'll say create token and it will show you a, a token that you need to copy and paste. That token is, um, is one time. So don't, don't close the window after you make this token. Um, I think I have a screenshot of this whole process, um, but I can continue doing it over, over live video. Uh, for those of you who have any issues, can you please let me know? I will try my best to help. Uh, you didn't say, but the package is done, right? I mean, as it is now, you can use it. Yeah, the package yeah. is the package is done. So if you wanted to just use it locally, yeah, you could you could skip all this Git stuff altogether. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then you click generate token, which I'm sorry I didn't do live. When, when I'm sharing my screen, do you see yourselves on the screen on the right? Like that? I have the gallery memorized. Okay. Okay, so it's a bit slow for some reason. Uh, what error do you get? Oh, I, I wonder if GitHub is down right now because my I'm stuck on the loading screen. Yeah, yeah it looks like GitHub is down. See, um, do we need to follow the token code? Uh, there's, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Which which token code? Oh, if you have no errors with GitHub, then yeah, you don't you don't need to do this. That means uh, that means I guess you you've already used Git with R and, and you have permissions. Um, I wish I could show you all, and I, I thought I had screenshots of all of this. Let me see. Maybe I maybe I have screenshots lurking somewhere. Um, 
Let's see. Yeah, uh, okay. It's personal access token. No, I don't have a screenshot. But basically, it seems GitHub is down right now for whatever reason. Is it still down for other people? Is it still down for you? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to reload. I, I think it created an account. Oh, yeah, no, it's not playing me now. Is it there enough to get the call? Oh, yeah. There's no access to it. Well, well, we'll skip this for now. Um, yeah, it looks like GitHub is down for some of us. Okay, no, okay, it came back up. So this little piece of text right here is extremely important. Um, for those of you, once your access token is, is working, this is your access token. So in theory, I should not be sharing this with you. In theory, this is very private information. You know, only, only my computer and my code should be able to see this. And GitHub takes this seriously enough that in fact, that once I leave this page, I will never see this code again, unless I write it down or save it somewhere. So it's basically a, a way, a highly secure way of making sure Git and your computer can talk to each other without getting hacked or, or any kind of malicious malware happening, that kind of thing. Which again, I'm not an expert, so I can't fully say what's going on, but I do know that much. So I want to copy this token and it, it gives you a little warning. Copy this token now, you won't see it again. This token is a special, special key between my computer and Git. What I do next is I need to set my credentials. I go to Git creds, Git creds set uh, is the, is the um, code I want to run. Git creds. Git creds set. I run that code. Oops, I spelled it wrong. So I run that little line. I want to replace these credentials. I won't actually do this right now because I already have credentials that work on my machine. But basically I hit two and you're going to paste that when prompted. So I'm not actually going to update my credentials because mine works just fine at the moment. But for this example, you can see on the screen is what how you would update it if you did want to update it. And at this point, as, as um, uh, someone said uh, in the chat, I believe that her, or I'm sorry, I, your code wasn't was working just fine. So you don't need to update your credentials. But for those of us where, where we had an error, this is how you update your personal access token. And now if we do use this, use GitHub, it will work and create a remote GitHub repository and create all this code for us, push it to Git. And again, I'm not going to run this because I don't want to overwrite what's already on Git for myself. But for those of you who are trying this code and have GitHub, this is how you push it to GitHub. And if we go to could not find system Git. Huh. I'm not sure how to do. Uh, do you use Git and GitHub, Rishi? Or have you previously used Git? A, a bit, but I think I might have some thing not working correctly on my computer. So oh. I'll look at it later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is not my strongest. Git and GitHub is not my strongest. So I, I don't recognize the error. Um, but I, I can try and help you after the workshop as well. Um, but it seems like maybe maybe you need to reinstall Git if you if you're not if you're on a Windows machine maybe. Yeah. Okay. So for for those of you who are going to try and push this to GitHub, if you go to your own personal repository now on GitHub, you can see that it's uh, it's actually magically has appeared. So if we go to my 
excuse me, my repository, we can see that Fjords is online. And this is the, I ran this same exact code 21 days ago when I was preparing to, for this workshop. And that's how I put it up on, on GitHub. And now it's available to everyone. And if someone wants to install my version, if someone wants to install this package, you are able to, you all sitting there can install this by running this code. If you wanted, for whatever reason, this silly Fjords package that I wrote 21 days ago. Um, if we want to publicize our, um, our package a bit better, if you want to make a whole package website, we can use something called package down. Um, so put that in the chat. So this is how people make really nice little websites package down for their functions is, I mean, you can do it manually, but it's pretty easy with package down. Again, it does everything automated for you. Um, you just run build site. So package down colon colon build site will build all of the HTML and CSS for you to build a, literally build a website from scratch for your package. It'll take a minute or two to run. It'll show you lots of code as it builds the HTML for you. Is there a call so people can cite the package? Um, are you asking so how how people how to how to write the citation for your right. package? Yeah, that's that's what I yes. Mean. Yes. Um, it would be in the description file. And who I believe use this has an automated way of for package citations, authors and citation. Create a citation template is the use citation function. Of course. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So now that our website has finished building, um, it created an example website that popped up on the screen in the background. So hopefully on everyone's machine now, for those of you who tried to make a website, you can see you have a website um, on your, your, uh, in your web browser of your newly made package. You've got documentation for your function. You've got the little vignette that we made earlier. And if you want to push this website live, you need to do a few fiddly settings. So you need to first go to GitHub and all the way on the right, you see settings, click settings. Then you go to the left, in the left, you see pages, you click pages. And you basically need to tell GitHub where your website code is. So in this case, every time I update the master branch, I, I'm telling Git that the, the website code is in the docs folder. So if we go to our, um, <clears throat> if we go to our Fjords um, files or package, and when we, when we ran the uh, package down use, sorry, build site function, what it did is it created the docs folder and inside is literally all the files for our website index.html 44 this is this is we open up index.html it opens up our website for us so basically we need to in the r uh, in the github uh, settings we need to show get like where this website comes from so you want to you want it pointing to the docs folder if you want it coming from a different branch you can select a different branch but right now we're just doing the master branch So now we have to actually push our changes to Git. So um, 
just a simple git add, git commit and push. We do that all in terminal. So here, so we do git add dot, git commit a message. In this case, again, I, I'm not going to push to git because I don't want to overwrite my previous uh, the previous um, package for you all so that the, because the previous package I put in a lot more documentation for anyone who will go look at it after this workshop. But then you need to run git push origin master. It will push all of these changes to git and you will see since we updated the settings here so that every time there's a change to master, uh, we've told it to update the package website. And that makes sense because if we're updating our package and we update a function, we want to be able to share that update with other people so that people, when they look at the website, whatever they see on the website matches whatever actually the package code says, right? So if you run that code to push your new code, you can go see under the actions tab on your on your in your case if you're if anyone's actually running this live you'll see uh, it's telling you the status of building your website building and deploying your website so in this case you can see when i was when i was first first testing this out i did something wrong and the first build failed and then the second build was successful you can see it tells you it tells you basically if your website is running up uh, normally and now there's a live website. For, so for those of you who are running this all uh, on your own machine, you should be able to go to your username .github.io slash fjords. And now there's a website actually live at that URL that contains this website with all of this, with our license, uh, citation, and so on and so forth. So I hope I hope for those of you uh, who are trying this at home that it is working because I mean it's and it, and that it works. It's very exciting when it works for the first time. You feel very you feel very accomplished because you've made a whole website all on your own. <laughs> so I, I hope that it's working on your end. Um, and I will I will do my best to troubleshoot to send me an email if anything's not working. But as it's getting kind of late, I want to wrap up, and then we can get to questions at the end. So. To recap, we've created a package from scratch, it took us only an hour. We documented it, um, both short-term documentation and long form, such as a vignette. We set, it up some, we set up some tests to make sure that when things go wrong, we understand what's going wrong. We set up version control with Git, published it to GitHub and built a website, so that's a lot. And our final, our final uh, file structure, is this, we made so many files in the last hour. And when I first was learning how to make a package, I actually was doing this manually because I had no idea about the use this function, but, or package, but with use this, it does all of this automatically for you and formats everything to best practice standards. And uh, hopefully now when you see a large a package with a million files, it's a lot less intimidating. So, you know, a lot of these files, you don't have to worry about making them yourself or remembering to format them yourself. It's all done for you by the use this package. And um, this package that we've live built is now on, on my own GitHub, along with the slides for, for this presentation. So if you want to peruse that, you can just go to my uh, GitHub on uh, at Popbox and peruse it there, or you can probably check out your own function if you manage to publish it to GitHub. So thank you. I want to say at the very end of all this, this is the, I, I got this really good talk from, I modified it and updated it. It's a couple years old from this blog post. So I can also share this with you all here because this was really helpful for me when I was first learning how to make packages, so. I want to share that with everyone to make sure everyone has this resource. And with that, I think I think we're all done. I hope that that was informative and for the most part smooth. And that everyone uh, now has 
the materials and the confidence to build and publish their own packages. Fantastic. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.